On today's video, I want to show you how you can use Obsidian to get yourself a second brain. I use Obsidian to take notes when I'm studying, to brainstorm ideas for YouTube videos, to write the scripts of the videos. When I'm making a course, all the planning and research is done in Obsidian. All the tasks and things I have to do are written down in Obsidian. 그리고 Obsidian으로 한국어를 공부해요. Obsidian is not a normal note-taking app. It's a note-taking app on steroids. Apart from being free, flexible, and customized, its killer feature is that Obsidian allows you to create links between your notes. Obsidian generates a knowledge graph that shows you the connections and relationships between concepts and thoughts. You can visualize what you know. It's like a brain map. When you know how one concept relates to another concept, you can learn, remember, and understand more easily. Another cool thing about Obsidian is that it can be used 100% offline. Your notes are stored locally on your computer. They are just files on a folder that you can access at any time. That means that at any point you can share your notes or move them to other apps. You are not locked in when you use Obsidian. It's the opposite of that. After you go to the website and download Obsidian, which is available for iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, and Linux, you are going to install Obsidian and you're going to be asked on which folder you would like to create your first Vault. An Obsidian Vault is just a folder where all the files you create inside of Obsidian will be saved. After creating the Vault, Obsidian will welcome you with an empty screen, showing you your empty Vault. On the sidebar, we can tell that we are inside of our Vault, but of course there are no notes on it yet. To create a new note, we will press Command N. The first line we write will be the title of the note and will be set as the name of the file. Obsidian supports Markdown, which means we can use headers, lists, links, images, YouTube, videos, video embeds. It also has this cool concept of callouts, which are little alerts you can create of different kinds that can also be foldable. It also supports Mermaid, a diagramming tool so we can insert diagrams and charts inside of our notes, which is very useful when we are learning new concepts. Like I said before, the killer feature of Obsidian is that it allows us to create links between our notes. Using this feature, we can organize our knowledge better. Instead of putting it all in one long file, we can instead write atomic notes. An atomic note should have only one idea. It should be self-contained and understandable on its own. So let's pretend that we are studying data structures and algorithms. We will first create a file with that name and then write an intro of what data structures and algorithms are in a list of some of them. To create a link to another note, we are going to wrap stacks around two squared brackets. As you can see, it is turned into a link. If I press command, it says that that node does not exist yet and that I have to click to create it. After command click, that will create a new stacks node where we can write down what stacks are. Since we're mentioning queues on the node, we should create a node about them. Again, we wrap the word queues around two square brackets and press control or command click. Then we write what queues are and because we're mentioning slacks, let's create a link to it. And now let's go back to our main file and connect queues to it as well. Now that we made all the connections, we can take a look at the graph view by clicking the second button on the left sidebar. As you can see, we can now visualize how they are all connected. If we now go back to our main file and create a link for hash tables, our graph view will start to grow. Another cool thing about linking your notes is that you can go to a note and on the right sidebar you can see what are the backlinks to it. That means which note is linking to that note. Another obsidian feature that is sort of newish are canvases, which you can use to create mind maps. To create a canvas, first we open the common palette pressing command B. We select create new canvas and we will get a canvas where we can now start dragging, positioning and connecting our notes. We can also create cards and connect our notes to them. We can edit our notes right from the canvas. And we can also bring images, files, videos, and even websites to it. I said before that Obsidian is very flexible and customizable, and that is because of its awesome community plugin system. Obsidian plugins are built using JavaScript and anyone can create one. Currently, there are more than 1,000 plugins, which is a number that is increasing day by day. There are plugins to add a calendar to Obsidian to 
create Kanban boards, to create slide presentations, and much, much more. My two favorite plugins are the Obsidian Git plugin that backs up my vault into a private GitHub repository and the Tasks plugin. Let me show you how that one works. After enabling community plugins and installing the Tasks plugin on a file named to study, the next time I create a checkbox, the plugin will kick in and will allow me to set a view date, start date, and schedule date. It will also let me set the priority level of the task. If let's say you have tasks in two different files. So for example, if I have a to study task list and a to do task list on another file called today, I can pull all the tasks that are for example due today and that are not completed yet by writing a query provided by the plugin. All I do is ask for all the tasks that are not done and that are due today and I group them by file name. Now I can add tasks anywhere I want and my today file will only give me the tasks of the day. Also, when I complete a task from anywhere, it will be updated in both files. I hope that today you got a good overview of what Obsidian is and what makes it special. I hope you liked the video and found it useful. If you did, please like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Obsidian has many cool features and customization options. You can change colors, install a different theme, create keyword shortcuts and more. So let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video on that. Also, let me know in the comments if you are already an Obsidian user and share with us what are some cool plugins we can use to make our second brain better. And please don't forget that if you want to learn to code for free, click the link below where you can take free courses on JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, and many others all for free. Click the link below and I will see you there. Onjana, Kamsa Hago, Salam Hamida, see you on the next one. Down me bye bye.